In this video, we're going to talk about the brand new Cherry Audio Super Oscillator for Voltage Modular. It really does some crazy fun things that you don't really expect from a typical analog style oscillator. Uh, I think when most people think of analog oscillators, you think of the standard sawtooth and pulse wave, square waves, and triangle waves, and so forth. And most oscillators don't go too far beyond that. But in this case, this is an analog style oscillator, and we found some ways to make some really crazy, unique sounds with it. Uh, it started out, if we look down here, with the Super LFO, which is a low frequency oscillator intended for modulation of other things. And we came up with all these things to make the waveforms all crazy in it for modulation purposes. Then we sort of realized, hey, like what if we took this up into audio range? I bet all these crazy waveforms would sound pretty cool. So that was how the Super Oscillator came to be. And they're quite similar looking. Uh, we replaced a lot of the synchronization capabilities and a couple of controls and basically just optimized it for use as an audio oscillator. So without further ado, uh, here's what it sounds like. Now it starts out by default just on a triangle wave that you can clearly see on the big display here. And the main control you're gonna use first most likely is the shape control. And with this shape control, you can continuously vary this triangle to become a square or pulse wave. And now we have uh, a standard square wave. Um, if we have this on square wave, we've got a standard pulse width control. And again, this is sort of the typical pulse width and you can modulate it obviously with your modulation input here. So you get your standard kind of uh, pulse width modulation. And we've got positive and negative control voltage going in here. If we go over this way, you can see we can actually get the in-between positions. So we can get some interesting sounds and certainly interesting looking waveforms. If we go all the way over to triangle wave over here, you'll see we've also got a pulse width control for the sawtooth waves or ramp waves. And this is pretty untraditional. Here we've got a regular triangle wave. And as I skew this over, you can hear and see that this turns into a sawtooth wave. So now we've got a standard sawtooth. So we can continuously vary this between a triangle and a saw a ramp wave. And of course, we can modulate that. And one thing I want to point out also is this big display up here. One of the really nice things about it is it makes it really easy to set uh, control voltages because without a visual reference, a lot of the time it's easy to undershoot or overshoot how much CV you want to get the result that you want. And let's say for example, I wanted this to uh, vary between a full, full blown ramp wave and uh, a regular triangle wave. Well, let's crank this all the way up. I'm gonna negative modulate this. You can see it's sort of overshooting, so I don't need that much voltage. I'm gonna back that off. So as you can see, it's real easy to dial things in just using that visual display. So a little sidebar there. <laughs> Let's get back to normal, as it were. Okay, so now we're back to a triangle wave. And another important control here is the rounding control, and it does exactly what you think. It, it rounds off the wave. So you can take your triangle and end up with a pure sine wave. We can use this skew control to move where it starts. Now, that doesn't have much effect on the sound in this case, but it does once we start getting weirder waveforms it definitely affects the sound. You'll see the crazier the wave, the more the skew control does. And another thing that should be obvious at this point is because I'm mixing a square wave and a triangle wave with the shape control, I'm using both pulse width controls and we can make some really weird sounds this way. can also use this polarity control to go above and below zero. And it 
again, on some sounds, this has more effect than others. All right, so that's the basic tour, but you'll notice I have not talked about this wave folder down here, and this is where the crazy fun really starts. Uh, this wave folder is a traditional uh, Surge Buchla style wave folding thing, and let me show you what it does. It tends to work really well with triangle and curved waves. It doesn't work as effectively with square and pulse waves. So here I've got obviously just regular triangle, and here goes crazy. Holy mackerel, is that cool. And, again, you can start modulating that guy. Let's really go nuts. Why am I turning that knob manually? It's a synthesizer. There we go. And there you go, I mean, something as simple as that ridiculously cool sound. Now let's mess with the rest of the controls. So that's just one example of what you can do. And you know, keep in mind, this is not a scripted demo. I didn't have any plan of making that. And you can just start twirling knobs and end up with this kind of stuff really quick. Let me show you a little more of what the wave folder does. I'm gonna get us back to uh, normal everything. I'm holding down the option key and clicking on these knobs to get them back to their default positions. All right, so I'm on a triangle wave and let's do some more wave folding fun. Now if I put this over to something more square, it's a lot louder. <laughs> It still works, but it's a little more effective, like I said, on the uh, triangle and sine type waves. We can also get some kind of like Formanti type, PPG type waves this way. I guess they uh, call them glottal waves. <laughs> Those kind of vocal track kind of things. And things start getting pretty strange here. And again, this kind of thing just screams for modulation. And of course, you can modulate as much as you want simultaneously. Not only does it sound awesome, it is really fun to look at. All right, I could do this all day, but uh, I'm gonna move on here. Uh, you've got a hard sync input, which works just like hard sync on any other oscillator. And with some of these crazy waveforms can get some pretty interesting results. And you've got uh, exponential and linear frequency mod inputs. And uh, of course we can use a regular keyboard CV or sequencer CV to play it like a regular oscillator. I just left it on here for the purpose of demonstration so I wouldn't have to hold down a key with my left hand forever. But that's basically the super oscillator. It's really awesome, and it just goes so far beyond what you'd expect from a regular oscillator. And best of all, it is included with the Voltage Core package. So if you have Core, then you're going to get it for free, essentially. Uh, if you buy Voltage new, it will come with it. So enjoy it. We're super proud of it, and thanks for watching.